I am back to you now to talk about launch velocities. Uh, and of course, I got my trusty ancient TI 86 here, and we've got the wonderful equation sheet, such as it is, with all of its beefy, juicy info. Uh, and I have last year's, as I have, my homework problem from last year. So let's begin. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do this problem, and it's going to take you less time than coronavirus spreads, and that's pretty fast. Hey, oh, all right, just kidding, but you got to laugh through this stuff a little bit. Okie dokie. Let's begin. Okay, so as always, to give you some starting conditions, right, a satellite will be launched from the following launch site in a perigee of the given orbit. That actually is a big deal. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, the launch site is 28.5 degrees north, longitude 80 west, which you guys are starting to hopefully recognize. You're like, oh, that's Cape Canaveral, right? That's Kennedy Space Center. Um, it's just a, a side note, and it makes sense that we use uh, this lat long for a lot of our launch problems because that's where we launch a ton of our stuff from. And, okay, it says local sidereal time is uh, 0200. So it's kind of in the middle of the night, early morning. Um, then our parking orbit, which is the orbit we're going to, excuse me, launch our spacecraft into, has a semi-major axis of 8,500. So pretty, pretty low Earth orbit. Uh, slightly eccentric, right? Uh, 0.1 there. And then an inclination of 40 uh, in a ran of 90. Great. So... First things first, is assuming the launch azimuth for the next launch opportunity is 44.5 degrees. So you guys remember from the last lesson where we actually had to, to nug out what the uh, launch azimuth was. Well, they're just kind of giving it to us here because the point is not necessarily to, to nug all the way through that. They say, okay, so if you guys remember the launch azimuth, the Greek letter for that was beta. That's not the best beta ever written, but yeah. B with a long tail, right? Greek things sometimes have long tail. Um, the letters do. It says, answer the following questions. What is the flight path angle at burnout? Okay, so this could in real life be a lot of things. But what I'm going to show you and what I'm going to tell you is phi, so that's my best way of writing phi, is a circle with kind of a line through it. I don't know how to write the Greek. It's this letter, you know, in Microsoft Word, but phi, right? That's what that is. That's how you say it, how you write it. It's going to be zero degrees. As a side note, put your calculator in degrees for this. Because remember, the only two things you really do in radians are orbit prediction and rendezvous because those equations are specifically built for radians. They, they're just, they don't do very well when you try to use degrees. So you can leave your calculator in degrees for this problem too. All right, flight path angle at burnout. Well, what's the flight path angle? So let's see. For a circular orbit or even a, let's see. You know what? Let's, let me take that back. Let me use the example of an elliptical orbit like we're actually doing here. Highly exaggerated, of course, right? That's not what point one eccentricity would look like. But it says we're launching into perigee. But this would be true also if we're, oh, gosh, launching into apogee. I'm just going to let you assume that's Apogee. Worst Apogee ever drawn. And now it's recorded forever. Cool. So that distance is going to be position vector, or position magnitude at perigee, position magnitude at Apogee, right? The problem says we're launching into perigee, but the point is flight path angle is going to be zero in this class. Uh, that phi, that flight path angle, is always going to be zero. I've seen homeworks in GRs where we do tell you that. I've seen homeworks in GRs where we don't tell you that. I would recommend go ahead and commit that to memory. Let that be one of the penguins on your mental island, that this flight path angle for Astro 310, it's going to be zero degrees. Because we are launching into perigee or apogee, well, you might say, well, what if you give me a problem where uh, I launch into Apogee, or uh, sorry, where I don't launch into Perigee or Apogee. And I would tell you, don't waste any mental penguins on that because for this class, it's a little beyond the scope of what we're trying to do. So, okay. B, what's the velocity at burnout? So I will tell you on this. Also, it's not specifically on your equation sheet, 
gets vaguely on your equation sheet. So let me let me write it a certain way and see if you recognize it. You might remember that the velocity of a satellite in an elliptical orbit is this classic. We only use the classics here. What if I told you that because we have an elliptical orbit and we're launching in a perigee, we have to use that velocity equation because we're in an elliptical orbit. We're launching into an elliptical orbit. Ta-da! Okay, so what this really turns out to be when you do a little substitution, the velocity at burnout needs to be, basically, let's assume that we burned up, we only put enough fuel in our rocket to get to where we needed to launch. What I mean is, once we, once we launch into perigee, like it says we're supposed to do, to perigee of our parking orbit, we're out of gas. Let's assume there's not a single drop left in that booster or a single fuel grain at the solid rocket. But uh, no fuel left. So velocity at burnout is basically just going to be the velocity at perigee of that orbit. So what you end up with here, substituting in a few things here, Mu over R burn out minus mu over 2A. Remember that this is negative mu over 2A. Now, the question is going to be, what A do we use here? I think you might be able to agree with me. That is the center major axis of our orbit. No. Now, what position magnitude are we using? What what radius, if you will? Uh, R sub burnout. So if we're burning out, basically if we're out of gas when we finally launch in and we finally get to perigee of our parking orbit, like we didn't put any extra fuel in, we're, we've burned out uh, at perigee, then that means this is just radius of perigee, which is A times 1 minus E. Of course, you guys remember that's from your direct from your equation sheet. So now, as Always the most pleasurable part, plugging and chugging. Here we go. I'm just going to put that in there. 1 minus 0.1. Okay. So minus, oop, I need more. 398600 over 2 times 85. 100, let's see what we get from that. I should not be negligent. Let me put the 0.5s on there like I should. Do, do, do. Divide by 500 times point. Minus. Okay, and then we'll throw that by two. And we take the square root, the square answer. That makes sense. Seven and a half kilometers per second or so. That is very typical for uh, Leo, as we note. Okay, circled, done. All right, now what takes a little more calculation is this delta V needed at burnout. So. I am looking right here. Delta V needed, we break up in the equation sheet into the three vectors, right? South, east, and zenith pointing. So that is your, your topographic uh, horizon coordinate system, right? Yay, we get another coordinate system for launch. Uh, and it's focused, which makes actually a lot of sense. It's focused at the launch site. So you know, zenith is directly up. That's what the direction that the rocket is launching. And then south makes sense and east makes sense. Those are those are cardinal directions. We can make sense of those, at least in some way. So basically here, what I'm going to do is a little housekeeping before I even plug in anything. So delta V needed in the south direction. I'm just going to kind of draw a little line under. That's the south component. So it's this negative VBO, cosine phi, cosine beta. Okay, great. Uh, delta V needed east is in between those, right? It's, it's going to be this VBO. V, I say VBO. 
<laughs> velocity of body odor. No, of course. V sub burnout. So when we write RBO or VBO, that's what we're talking about, our radius of burnout or velocity of burnout, times cosine of phi, sine of beta, that launch azimuth, minus the velocity of the launch site. So that's there's a couple things I want to do that are housekeeping, the velocity of the launch site and the velocity uh, of loss due to gravity. So let me take those before we plug anything in. I'm going to section myself off a little space up here to do velocity of a launch site. I'm going to abbreviate that V sub LS. And equals 0 0.4651. Cosine up, oh, L sub naught is back. Oh, how odd. The velocity of launch site, you might say, is well, you know, I'm not on the shifting seas of the ocean, and my launch site is not on top of a, a NASCAR that's moving at 150 miles an hour, so why does my launch site have any velocity? And I would say to you, well, it's not relative to you standing on the Earth. Uh, it would be relative to, for example, you might, if you were an observer standing on the sun with your sun boots, because you need sun boots, uh, otherwise it would be too hot. <laughs> anyway, if you're an observer on the sun, you'd, you'd look out at the earth and say, oh, not only is that planet going around this giant ball of fire, it's also rotating on its own axis, right? So by virtue of the fact that the earth rotates on its own axis relative to an external observer, uh, your velocity of your, your launch site has some actual velocity. And it's based on the latitude of that launch site, right? The north-southness of the launch site. Well, we're told that 20 and a half degrees north is our launch site latitude. So let's plug and chug. Okay. Cosine of 28.5. Kind of counterintuitive and weird, but if we launch east at all, our launch or our vehicle rather gets uh, some added velocity, which is really handy. So the velocity of the launch site is 0 0.49. I'll go ahead and truncate that kilometers per second. Now that's that. That's good. But I need to do V of losses due to gravity. So what is this? Well, when my spacecraft is thrusting upward, the only reason it really has to invest almost energy, any energy at all, is because there's gravity, right? That's what we're fighting when we pack that rocket, that booster, full of very combustible materials, uh, and then point that uh, combustion in a certain direction. It's to fight gravity so that we can actually get our spacecraft into orbit. So losses due to gravity is something that is, uh, are something that is uh, non-negligible, right? It's significant. So let me do this little part up here. So velocity v of bleh, velocity lost due to gravity, right? So, or put another way, how much faster would we be going if the Earth had no gravity? So v of losses due to gravity is two mu, oh, two mu, r sub b o minus launch site all over r b o times radius of launch site. Cool. This is a really quick plug and chug. Let's get free points together. Free points on the GR are good points. That's all I'm saying. Okay, radius of burnout. We found, let's see. Actually, we found it up here, although I just kind of plugged it and chugged it. Let's see. I didn't solve it. On its own. Mm -hmm. Seventy six fifty. Seventy six fifty minus radius at the launch site. Okay, here's this is tricky a little bit. We make some assumptions about the radius of the Earth, right? 6378, you guys are so used to type it in your calculator, your fingers are tired of it by now, right? 6378.137 kilometers. Well, okay, that's that's a, a pretty fair average. Like if you're as an alien, if you're an alien in Andromeda and you had a great 
telescope then you could see earth you'd say oh that's got about a radius of 6378 but obviously you all know it's not true the difference between the top of the himalayas uh, and sea level is is significant uh, so what we're assuming here is we're launching from cape canaveral that is basically sea level it's right on the coast so we're just going to assume that because the launch site is right on the coast there we're launching at the radius of the earth which is to say 6378 kilometers from the center of the earth um, the only exception to this might be if you were launching from an aircraft which sounds weird but there's a couple of companies that have there was a company that had a 747 uh, that they would fly and they would have hanging off of one one wing or under the underbelly of the space or the aircraft i can't remember but hanging off was a booster and basically that jet would get up as high as it could get uh, and then it would allow the booster to launch from the aircraft. And so basically in that case, instead of launching from sea level, you'd launch at, um, you know, radius of the earth plus whatever height of the aircraft it was. Um, and those launches were not quite as common. They were launching smaller spacecraft into orbit. But that is a story for another time. Just be conscious of where you're told you're launching from. Um, you're not told that there's you're launching from an aircraft we would be very explicit about that if not even giving you a picture we would tell you in as many words so what i mean to say in all this is radius of the launch site it's just the radius of the earth in our problem okay raise a burnout 6650. Here's the launch site. Okay, so I get about one and a half kilometers a second. And that, that checks. That squares with kind of what we know. All right, so now we've got our velocity of the launch site and our velocity of losses due to gravity, again, which is basically like saying, how fast could we accelerate to if there were no gravity, right? What portion of the booster is going to just fighting gravity of the Earth? So it's about well, 1.4 kilometers per second worth of booster fuel. Now it's time for the ultimate plug and chug. And I say ultimate because we're going to do it in this kind of monster vector format. Delta V needed south. Delta V needed east. And Delta V needed, oof, sorry, zenith. And we're going to keep these in line. You'll see what I mean in a second. Okay. So negative V PO times cosine phi cosine beta VBO cosine phi sine beta. Oh, tricky. VBO sine phi minus quantity zero velocity of launch site zero plus quantity zero zero v sub lg okay equals all right now let's plug and chug we are not scared. We are not intimidated. This is no biggie. 7.57 cosine 0. Cosine. Let's see here. We are given the launch azimuth, which is nice. Um, 44.5 degrees. 
7.57 cosine. Why did I write cosine phi when I just know it's zero? Sometimes I have a habit of writing zero like that, and that's an old habit. But okay, anyway, cosine zero sine 44.5, 7.57 sine zero. Ooh, you know what? I'm just going to combine them all in the same bracket, which you can do. You can do it. So minus zero plus zero minus velocity of the launch site, which we found was 0 0.409. And this is minus zero. Minus zero plus 1.442, because that's the velocity of velocity of gravity. Let's see what this comes out to be. Alrighty. Times cosine of zero, which is one, times cosine of 44.5 minus zero plus zero, so that's easy. All right, that ends up being negative five point mm, three nine nine kilometers per second in the s direction, which means north, right? Negative south means north, uh, and then that was deep, right? Let's see, times sine of oh, and cosine zero. Sine 4.5, negative 0.409, or minus one. Okay, that means 4.97 in the east direction. And then, of course, 7.57 sine zero, that just goes to zero. So that just ends up being 1.442. S hat, E hat, Z hat, yeah, kilometers per second. And this is us circling our answer here. Okay, cool. Now, the last bit. Assume velocity of losses other than gravity, which is just to say, eh, uh, we lose some velocity due to imperfections just in the world that we live in. So we're going to give you this value, V of losses other than gravity. Our equation sheet says... The delta V design that we want, and this is the holy grail kind of this whole math problem here, is the absolute value of, oh, we're going to have to do absolute value again, magnitude, here it comes, delta V needed, which we just found, we found it in vector notation, which is good, plus V losses OTG, I call it, uh, other than gravity, OTG. Well, you guys remember how to do magnitudes it's the square root of negative 5.399 squared plus 4.897 squared plus oh, 1.442 squared and then that whole thing plus our velocity of losses otg which we, they just gave us here so we plug and chug. I wonder what we will find. Alrighty. So that ends up being 7.43. It's 1.1. Of course, that's going to give us 8.53. kilometers per second. We're going to have to stuff our rocket fuel, a rocket rather, full of enough fuel so that we can get a little more than eight and a half kilometers per second worth of boost out of it. And that'll overcome kind of the imperfections in the world that we live in, right? VL, OTG, uh, it'll overcome gravity. Uh, thankfully, we get a boost from our launch site. Anyway, it takes all those things into account. And now you guys can literally say that you are rocket Scientists. Oh, there's my thumbs up. Thumbs up. Rocket science. Okay. Uh, it's been fun as always. Uh, we'll see you guys next time.